Welcome to today's webinar, How to Give Your Patient Experience Scores a Boost. My name is Nick Thompson, I'm Product Marketing here at Jamf, and joining me is Adam. Adam, welcome. Thanks so much, Nick. All right, so what are we going to be talking about today? Let's take a brief, let's take a look at our agenda. Um, we're going to talk about uh, some industry priorities and trends that we're seeing in healthcare and how it's going to relate to uh, patient experience scores and boosting them. We'll then look at some iOS solutions specifically for patients. We'll also be looking at iOS solutions for care teams. We'll have really two stories to tell today, one around patients, the other around care teams. And then we'll wrap it up by talking about how those solutions are part of Jamf and how we can deliver them to you. And of course, we'll, we'll also wrap up with some Q&A as well, too. Now, before we get into some of the industry uh, priorities and trends, I want to just give a little bit of background about Jamf. So if you're not familiar with us, uh, we are called Jamf, and our mission is to help organizations succeed with Apple. This is all that we do. We make management software only for Apple devices. And a lot of organizations use us to manage those devices. In fact, we manage, uh, we have over 15,000 organizations globally that rely on Jamf to manage over 10 million Apple devices. Uh, you see us in some of the traditional Apple markets that are out there, like the top technology companies, uh, the top global marketing groups, uh, Fortune 500, which has been expanding uh, greatly with their Apple presence, uh, some of the most valuable brands, and something that we're very proud of is the number of schools that we help around the globe too. And of course, what we've been doing now in healthcare. So just a brief overview here of Jamf, uh, but to really talk about healthcare and to talk about some of the priorities that we're seeing from our healthcare customers out there, I'd like to turn it over now to Adam, uh, who is our alliance manager specifically for the healthcare vertical. Adam. Thanks so much, Nick. And as, as you mentioned, there are many priorities facing organizations in all areas today, including healthcare. But one common trend we hear from our customers is in this concept of putting the patient first. How can we really subscribe to a patient-centric approach to care? Now, of course, this isn't a new focus. The Institute for Healthcare Improvement's Triple Aim initiative has long established the experience of care alongside per capita cost as well as population health as the three pillars that a healthcare institution should focus on to improve performance. So how do we see this priority of putting the patient first manifest into various initiatives or focuses? Well, there are a number of them. And as it pertains to technology initiatives, we're seeing organizations explore ways to engage patients within the four walls of the institution and help them get through their experience in new ways. At the same time, we're seeing organizations ex explore how the care teams around those patients can employ new workflows and be more efficient and effective in the delivery of care. And of course, beyond that, how can we continue this type of engagement beyond the four walls of the institution itself and influence the lives of the patient in their, in their home, in their daily life? Now, these are big topics. We won't have time to cover all of them today, but know that Jamf is focused on all of them. And today we'll really hone in on the first two, as Nick mentioned earlier. So to zoom out a bit and look at what's happening in the industry, or I should really say what's been happening in the industry on this focus of patient initiative, or excuse me, patient experience. It was over 12 years ago that uh, various government institutions created what is today known as HCAPs, or the Hospital Consumer Assessment of Healthcare Providers and Systems. Now, that's a mouthful, but what this initiative has been driving is finding new ways to report on a patient's perception of their experience of care. For example, how well are the care teams around that patient communicating both about conditions and procedures as well as medications? How responsive is the hospital staff to a patient's needs? You know, even, even other items such as how clean or quiet is the facility in and of itself or how well is that patient uh, you know, prepped for discharge. Also some global trends. How likely is that patient to recommend that institution to a friend or family member, or what's their overall rating of the institution? Now, as I mentioned, this is not new, but what has evolved over the past number of years is this shift to value-based care, 
whereby organizations are increasingly motivated to deliver more value in terms of quality and cost and other outcomes uh, versus a fee-for-service model where they're really motivated by the value of services delivering. And of course, as it pertains to these payment models, there are shifts in reimbursements, both from private and public payers. Here you can see the hospital value-based purchasing program from CMS in 2018 and the various domain weights. And you can see that 25% of these reimbursements for Medicare patients are directly tied to that experience of care. So it's an important initiative and one that, again, has been present for quite some time in the industry. Well, where are we today? You know, with a recent survey by the Barrel Institute titled The State of Patient Experience in 2017, only 26% of the over 1,500 healthcare orgs surveyed, uh, global, I should say, reported that they feel they have well-established experience efforts. So if that's where we are today, where do these institutions want to be? Well, 82% of that same cohort reported that patient experience is the number one priority over the next three years. And also notable is the fact that employee engagement or staff engagement is directly behind that, with nearly half of those institutions reporting that employee engagement has a direct influence on patient engagement and patient experience. Now, Outside, there are other consulting organizations that are reporting these same types of findings. For example, Deloitte has a number of studies looking into patient experience and tying it to better financial performance of the institution, as well as higher clinical outcomes and clinical quality. On the financial side, if we're better engaging these patients as true consumers, the more likely we are to uh, motivate them to come back for repeat procedures, I should say follow-up procedures. And of course, the more they're informed and educated when in the four walls of your institution, the better they're going to adhere to discharge instructions and see better outcomes on the long run. So at Jamf, we were looking into how does technology play a role in this world of patient experience? And we actually commissioned a survey of our own, looking into specifically mobile device initiatives within hospitals and their impact on patient experience. We surveyed over 16, excuse me, 600 IT decision makers around the globe, and this included a whole host of sizes of institutions. And the results were pretty loud and clear that healthcare orgs do view mobility as a primary way to enhance experience for both patients and their care teams. Now, that said, these institutions still see challenges with these types of deployments from a security and privacy uh, standpoint, and we'll get into some of that in a bit. Our survey also showed that 90% of these organizations are already or planning to implement mobile initiatives. And you know, the 10% that aren't can still connect the dots back to where those initiatives would have benefit to user populations. You can see that those 90% that are doing this today uh, really are, are deploying devices in a whole host of different use cases and user populations across their institution. Probably the most interesting finding that we had seen was the fact that 96% of organizations that had already implemented a mobile device initiative have seen an increase in their patient experience scores. And of that, nearly a third said that those scores had driven, excuse me, had raised drastically. So if you really subscribe to the fact that mobility can have this type of impact, what mobile platform is best for the job? What mobile platform is designed with the user in mind? Apple is the answer. Now that said, there are challenges with patient experience deployments. How do we personalize this experience for each patient? How do we ensure that they have the resources that are relevant to them? How do we deploy and manage this at scale and ensure that these are repeatable processes and at the same time automated so they don't require manual work from IT or care teams? How do we ensure that throughout all of this, security and privacy is held with the utmost regard. Well, of course, if you don't deploy and manage devices, well, we of course won't be able to customize them. And often uh, this would lead to a single use type configuration of a device whereby one app is deployed and that's really the only purpose of the device, not leveraging the rest of what's possible with an app ecosystem. Even worse, 
We may have scenarios where care teams have to spend time with their IT hat on, configuring devices and taking time away from taking care of their patients. And again, this could all point back to serious security and privacy concerns for the institution. So what does this all lead us to? An MDM solution or a mobile device management solution is needed for this type of technology initiative. Now, hearkening back to our survey I mentioned, those healthcare institutions had MDMs deployed in, in uh, the majority of cases. That said, they weren't confident in them. And overwhelmingly, 95% of the organizations felt their MDM could improve. So what does this mean? It means that you need the right tool for the job. You might be able to use a hammer to put in a screw, but you're better off using the correct tool. What is that tool that you need? It's an Apple management solution. You need an Apple management solution that understands the core tenant of a modern Apple deployment from over the air automated deployment workflows with Apple's device enrollment program to automatic installation of applications alongside Apple's VPP or volume purchase program, even managing and pre-configuring the apps as they're deployed. Of course, security is table stakes and we can't compromise it, both for the end user perspective as well as for you as the organization to ensure you have the right insight from a compliance, compliance and reporting standpoint. And above and beyond all of this, we need additional plus ones for these use cases around automation, where we can integrate into other systems to drive new workflows. And again, really enable users with zero touch workflows. Which brings us back to Jamf. Jamf Pro is that solution, and we've developed unique healthcare workflows and modules to work with it to drive new experiences for both patients and care teams. So to dig into the patient experience, we fundamentally believe that an iPad at the center of that patient experience allows an institution to deploy innovative iOS apps that engage, educate, and entertain patients in new ways. Now, we bring up a couple of the items on the screen as just a art of the possible. We, of course, have some great partners and recommendations as it pertains to applications, which we'll talk through in a moment. But what I'd encourage you to think through is whatever experience you're looking to create for your patients, scour what's out there today. And we can work with you to help those app developers employ the right strategies for the workflow I'm about to show you. So what does this look like for a patient? Well, when a patient is admitted in this model, they're given a clean iPad, very much like it's fresh out of the box for the first time. And that patient can be empowered to drive through the iOS setup assistant, selecting their own language to personalize the experience across that device. Now, once the device gets on the network, you can see it's talking through Apple's device enrollment program to point that device back to the correct Jamf Pro instance to enroll into management. And we see in a matter of minutes, the right resources applications, settings, wallpapers, home screen layouts, et cetera, are deployed automatically that to, to that device. So to walk you through, again, some of these apps or potential applications, we're seeing EMR organizations themselves develop interesting apps natively for the iOS platform, ones that deliver personalized medical information, all tailored to that inpatient setting. For example, who's my care team? What's my schedule for the day? What are my vital signs? What other information is relevant to me as a patient that I'd like to have at my fingertips? This is possible today. And if your EMR provider doesn't have a native app, I'd first encourage you to give them the feedback that they should. But secondarily, there are third parties that are creating overlay applications that can still drive this type of experience and integrate back into the EMR as well. So this is just one way to engage a patient. Now beyond that, we're seeing uh, lighting control systems and HVAC systems buy into this model as well, whereby we can deploy an app that empowers a patient to control their environment. For example, lighting, temperature, television, the shades, all of these things can be customized so that that patient has that accessibility and doesn't have to reach out to the care team for a non-care related task. Now, a few specific partners that we work with through the Apple Mobility Partner Program, Tonic Health, who are really fundamentally changing the way that patient data is collected through the iOS platform. Now, this can span outside the four walls of the patient room into your waiting room and, and other areas, but they're streamlining the way that intake and registration workflows take place, e-consent forms, patient satisfaction surveys, and even payments captured right through this platform. 
So whereby a deployment may have a few anchor applications that are deployed initially to that device, it's also great to empower patients with a way to find other apps that might be relevant to them. And Jamf has a great solution for that in our solution called self-service. Self-service is a private app catalog that the healthcare institution can pre-populate with the apps they feel relevant to their user population or their patient population. The patient can simply open up self-service, find an app that they like, and that is then automatically installed on the device without any Apple ID required, which again is based on our tight integration with Apple's volume purchase program. So this may all sound great, but you might be asking, isn't this patient essentially setting up this hospital-owned device as though it's their own? And you're exactly right. That is what's taking place. But you might be seeing the potential challenge in that. How do we clear that footprint off the device when the patient is no longer in the institution? And it's this exact problem that had been faced facing many of our clients uh, when exploring this solution on competitive platforms or even with competitive management providers. What do we do at the end of that patient's stay? Do we require a nurse to pick up the device and take it somewhere? Do we require a call into IT for someone to take some action? Wouldn't it be great if we could automate that process so that care teams and IT don't have to change a thing? Well, that's exactly what we've done with Jamf Healthcare Listener. This is a way that we can automatically wirelessly wipe a device from Jamf based on certain triggers out of an EMR system. So the end result is that the device is digitally sterilized for the next patient. To go a little deeper into Jamf Healthcare Listener, I again mentioned that we're tying directly into EMR servers, and we can listen for certain triggers of the patient journey, for example, an admit, a transfer, or discharge, and then use those triggers to automate the right remote command from Jamf Pro. So if I zoom out and take you through the full workflow, when a patient is admitted, we leverage native Apple programs such as DEP, the device enrollment program, to automatically enroll that device into Jamf Pro. Once enrolled, the right configuration profiles, applications, and security settings come down to tailor that bedside experience. And at the end of that patient's stay, we can listen for a discharge, and healthcare listener will automate the right remote command to Jamf Pro, in this case a wipe, so that we're ready to start the whole process over again. The goal with this is to create something that's simple for the patient, that empowers them in new ways. It protects what's so important to them, and again, is simple for hospital and IT uh, and care teams. So that's the iPad story, but that's only one half of the equation for patient experience. With the changes that Apple has made to Apple TV, we're now able to bring forward these same types of automated workflows to the tvOS platform and deploy both iPads and Apple TVs together for a true Apple ecosystem experience. We can deploy the right applications to that device, even have the right ability to restrict native functions of the device, and again, have the right remote commands to again clear that device uh, after the patient is discharged. Now, what are the common use cases that we're seeing with Apple TV today? Well, one of the most common is the ability to airplay or screencast an iOS device up to an Apple TV. You can also imagine there may be security challenges with that. If I'm looking at my own medical information, I certainly don't want to broadcast that on an Apple TV in my neighbor's room. And so Jamf has been working behind the scenes to create the possibility to effectively whitelist devices together. With our features such as AirPlay permissions and a few other configuration payloads, we have the ability to ensure that the iPad in room 303 can only see the Apple TV in that same room. And furthermore, with our most recent release of Jamf Pro, we've gone one step further so that we can actually pre-define the Apple TV remote app on an iOS device to only work with that same Apple TV in the room. So these are, again, great ways to support the use case of AirPlay. But what's really exciting is what could happen beyond that. And we, again, have some partners through the Apple Mobility Partner Program that are pushing the boundaries here. For example, Moncierge is attacking both the hospitality space as well as healthcare and creating very interesting guest and patient experiences on the tvOS platform. So, for example, 
we could have a custom application that deploys out facility information, uh, allows a patient to order their meals and put in other non-care service requests from this tvOS platform. And beyond just some of those tenants, they're also folding in entertainment and have the ability to pipe in IPDV content from various providers so that we have a true entertainment solution on an enterprise scale to deliver on Apple TV. So what does patient experience, what do these deployments look like in practice? Well, you know, our flagship customer with this solution is the University of San Diego, California, and specifically the Jacobs Medical Center, which they opened up in the end of 2016. It's a beautiful 245-bed facility. Uh, and, you know, from the get-go, they really wanted to double down on this notion of patient experience throughout all aspects of the operation. And within the patient room in and of itself, they had this vision for how technology could play a role. We worked very closely with UCSD as well as a number of partners. And, in fact, it was really what shaped much of the solution you're looking at today. What does that solution look like at UCSD? Every single one of those 245 patient rooms has an iPad and Apple TV for the patient's use. Some of the engagement applications that they're deploying would include Epic MyChart Bedside, as well as the room control app by Crestron. But beyond that, they're pushing out their own educational videos and you know, allowing patients to leverage Jamf self-service to find new entertainment apps or games to pass the time. If you've been at JNUC over the past couple years, you've probably heard this story and maybe even heard from Mark, uh, the director of IS Experience and Development at UCSD, directly. Uh, one of the quotes he shared last year at JNUC, which again is our user conference at Jamf, was this. With Jamf Healthcare Listener, we've wiped our iPads over 10,000 times since launch. It's seriously an ROI we can see from a full-time employee perspective or a headcount perspective. Now, beyond just that, from an operational efficiency perspective, what's really exciting is the output in this capacity. Their overall HCAP scores have improved. And as Mark states, you know, we believe that it is in part based on the fact we provide a patient with an iPad and Apple TV in every room. So it's not just UCSD. There are a whole host of other customers that have deployed or are in process of deploying this solution. For example, Geisinger, a very well-known institution on the East Coast, has an iPad patient bedside deployment powered by Jamf. The Bungie Foundation, one of our close partners, has a very unique program called iPads for Kids, whereby they're leveraging Jamf on the back end to power this type of offering, but really focused in on pediatric institutions across the U.S. And outside the U.S., West Frigas House in uh, the Netherlands, again, has this same deployment uh, live today, and many more are coming down behind them. So that was one of our stories today all around patient experience. But as Nick mentioned on the front end, there's another story to tell, and that's how iOS devices can enhance the delivery of care for care teams. In a similar art of the possible type discussion, there are a whole host of applications, both from EMR providers and third parties, that are driving innovative ways for care teams to streamline their efficiencies, be it the ability to manage alerts and alarms right from the mobile device, uh, or capture bedside vitals, or get access to documentation and medical reference, uh, even administer medications right at the bedside. These are all possible today. And arguably most important is the ability for care teams to efficiently and effectively communicate amongst each other. One of our partners is out front in this space, PatientSafe, who have developed a great application called Patient Touch that really pulls together both clinical communication and workflow into a single unified iOS app and allows clinicians to truly double down on this notion of care coordination centered around a patient. Similar to what we discussed in the patient side, we were able to pre-configure these applications through Apple's framework called Managed App Configuration, which allows us to pre-populate server settings and other things that would otherwise uh, potentially be uh, in the face of a user when they open up the app for the first time. The goal is when a clinician grabs that device and they open that app, we want it to be fully functional for their use. Now, sometimes in these projects, you need more than the iOS device in and of itself. 
Perhaps you need to extend the functionality of that device in various ways. Another partner of Jamf that's really out front here is Infinite Peripherals, who have developed all types of iOS peripheral devices for various industries, but in healthcare have this product, the Infinia iX7, that's ruggedized for healthcare use cases. It has you know, the features you would expect, like user replaceable hot swap batteries, barcode scanning, RFID support, LEDs that are programmable, both from an application layer uh, and the device itself. And you know, again, this is in many cases needed depending on the use case. Well, you might be asking, okay, well, that's another component of technology that then our IT admins need to manage, which is true. But luckily, Infinite Peripherals has developed a cloud-based uh, management portal for their peripheral devices called Infinia IQ. It's a place you can visit to, let's say, update a firmware uh, or other component of one of their peripheral devices. But as we've been working together, we thought, wouldn't it be great to uh, support IT admins with a unified place to have information and see the total health of their clinical communications deployments? And that's exactly what we've done with the Infinia IQ Jamf Pro integration. It's now possible for all of the data points of that peripheral device to be passed via the Jamf API into Jamf Pro and actually visualized right within that device inventory record of the phone that's in that sled. And this can all happen in an automated way. Simply get a phone into an IPC sled, deploy the uh, Infinia IQ app from Jamf Pro pre-configured to that device, and the rest can happen automatically. So these are just some of the ways that we're approaching these use cases in clinical communication. Now, a common question that comes up from our customers is, what's the right deployment model? What's the right scenario? Should we be giving a device to every employee or should we find different ways to use iOS devices? And for that, I'm going to ask Nick to come back in. Yeah, thanks, Adam. And, you know, great overview of what we're doing here with clinical communication solutions here. And, of course, when it comes to these sorts of devices, you need to think, will it make more sense to give a device to every single employee or uh, is it best to use shared devices? And of course, the answer is whatever works best for your specific environment. Now, we support corporately owned, personally enabled devices. Uh, this is what we do uh, all the time where you have that over the air deployment method. Uh, we're seeing that uh, uh, iPhone here on the right being automatically configured. Uh, and we can leverage natal, native Apple user features such as the mail app or the calendar app. Um, and it makes it really, really easy for uh, life cycle management as well too. This can be especially great for somebody like a doctor or a physician that really needs to be able to be reached um, both in the hospital and outside of the hospital. Um, and it just sort of makes sense to, for them to have their own specific device. But what about uh, maybe our shift workers that uh, want to share devices and just have it be, uh, you know, enabled for that particular set of time? Well, I'm really excited to talk about some new apps that we are looking at developing to solve that shared device model. And to put that in a little bit of perspective here, uh, this is a purpose and a vision that we have at Jamf is that you know we really want to empower people with technology uh, that puts humans first. We do this with our self-service app that you saw earlier on in the presentation. And uh, this next app that we are currently working on uh, is a proof of concept for how to do shared devices, and we call it Jamf Setup. So what this would allow you to do is to have shared device for really any workflow. Um, the user would simply open up this app, select what sort of role they are, and the device automatically applies a specific configuration. No IT is required on this. Plus, you don't have to deal with complex, you know, uh, uh, cart solutions that may require add-on software that's doing something that might not be an approved method from Apple. Uh, it also uh, doesn't require any sort of login. So what would this look like? Again, this is a proof of concept that we're currently working on. 
here I have an iPad that I've just pulled out of uh, you know my my charging uh, dock and uh, this iPad is locked into this app and it's saying who am I? I get to choose from th this this list here which IT has pre-populated. In this case, I'm going to be a registered nurse. So I tap on registered nurse. I'm going to hit submit. I then get a confirmation screen saying that my device is now going to be configured for a registered nurse. Now, if I made the wrong selection, I could always go back and choose a different one. But what's happening in the background is really unique and special. We're doing a couple of uh, fun things. We're applying the appropriate apps for this device. We're setting the appropriate wallpaper, how the home screen should be laid out, and any appropriate restrictions. So I'm going to hit the home button, and we're going to see what it looks like now that it's done all of this all over the air. And here we are. Uh, my device now is uh, specifically tailored for me as a registered nurse on the nursing care team. I've got all my appropriate apps right down there in the dock ready to go. Uh, no complex cart required here, all done over the air. Now, let's say I'm done with my shift and I want to uh, return this device. Uh, and you know, on my device, since I've been working with uh, personally identifiable information, I want to make sure that this device is properly reset. I want to erase all information on here altogether. Unlike the healthcare listener, which was listening for a specific trigger, I want to do this on my own. Now, if you've ever reset your own iPhone before, you know you have to dive into a couple of different screens and it can be a little complex. So we wanted to simplify that. And that's where our second app that we're working on comes into play. And that's the Jamf Reset app. Uh, just a very simplified reset workflow. Um, it initiates a remote wipe command that the user uh, initiates there. And again, no complex cart and no IT interaction required. Let me just show you how it looks. So again, here I am on my iPad. I open up the reset app and it's dead simple. One easy red button that says reset my device. Uh, of course, we do want to confirm if it actually wants to be reset or not. Uh, and then when I say reset, it is now completely reset back to factory settings, digitally sterilized, ready for the next user. So two apps that we're currently in uh, proof of concept on right now, Jamf Setup and Jamf Reset. If you're interested in these apps, please contact us directly and we would love to see how these apps could work in your environment. So let's do a little bit of a recap here and we'll wrap up and do some, some Q&A. We talked about a couple of core technologies that we have built into Jamf Pro that really are tailored for the healthcare experience. The healthcare listener, which is that great uh, uh, tool that will listen for HL7 commands and do triggered actions to your devices uh, based on when a, a, a patient checks out or moves rooms uh, so that you can remotely erase iPads in between each visit. And these new apps that are currently in proof of concept that we're talking about for clinical communications and the delivery of care to set up a device all over the air uh, with no complex cart and to quickly reset it as well, too. And of course, all of this fits inside of the larger product, which is Jamf Pro, which helps us do zero touch deployments, device configuration using mobile device management, app management using the volume purchase program gathering extensive inventory data and doing some unique things with that inventory and reporting on it, applying the appropriate security controls, and allowing our users and the people that we serve a quick and easy way to get the appropriate apps that they need through a self-service app catalog. Some quick tech details on the back end of this that stuff. You know, Jamf Pro is really just a web-based app, and uh, the server itself can either be hosted in the cloud or you can run it on-premise, whichever works for your specific environment. And we go beyond our product, too. Uh, we offer great professional services, both on location and remote, uh, to customize this for your specific environment. We offer training both online and in the classroom to get certified in the product and to really get the most out of it. 
Plus, we're here for you for support. Our world-class support, which is global uh, in, in various call centers across the globe here. Uh, you get to talk to Apple experts who understand the Apple platform and, again, how to make it work for your environment. We talked about a lot of technologies, and to just recap, we integrate with all of these things that Apple has from an enterprise deployment standpoint. Uh, the push notification service, uh, Apple School Manager, device enrollment program, and volume purchase program. Plus, we integrate with a lot of the technologies that you probably have on your network right now, such as Active Directory or single sign-on providers uh, or Microsoft System Center or even uh, Microsoft Intune to share inventory data from Jamf into those systems. Uh, Cisco ICE and Fastlane for network access control and quality of service markings for apps. Uh, ServiceNow for inventory data and our robust API. In fact, uh, a lot of our... Uh, um, Folks in our community build great integrations that work with all this, and we post them on our marketplace, uh, marketplace.jamf.com. Great resource to find integrations that work with Jamf Pro. And we've got developers as well, too, uh, who develop these, uh, and we have a developer resource. So some next steps here for you. Uh, contact us to get started. Head over to Jamf.com. We've got a whole landing page just about healthcare, Jamf.com slash healthcare, and you can learn all about our different uh, solutions here. And if you want to learn more about some other topics, we've got some webinars uh, across the board uh, here too. And finally, check out Jamf Nation. Jamf Nation is our free and open community forum. Uh, over 60,000 members are a part of Jamf Nation, uh, where you can learn from other IT administrators about what they're doing in their environment. So with that, I uh, want to thank everyone uh, for joining. And if you have any questions at all, head over to Jamf.com, check out our healthcare solutions page. Thanks, everyone, and have a wonderful day. Thank you.